For today's You Made It segment, we're taking a look at a bunch of different versions of Amanda Burka's Squatty Sidekick Bag. The original, which you can see here, was designed for just one hank of a really beautiful, thick and thin, um, kettle-dyed wool single. And as you can see, even after felting, the subtle variations in the color really show through. It's got a really cute sort of shrunken hobo shape to it, or sort of a, a flattened circle, circle bag shape, sort of depending on how you look at it. And it's got this great little button flap that, sh that serves as kind of a nice showpiece for a really beautiful button. So you could build a whole bag around a button there. So people have done a bunch of different fun things with this. First off, we have Meg from Oxford, Michigan. And what Meg did was she made the bag pretty much as, as directed in the pattern, but she made it just slightly shorter, so it's got even squattier of a shape. And she's used a slightly tweedy yarn. So you can see even after felting, the flex are still visible in the tweed. Next up, we have two bags that both use the same yarn, but that have very different effects to them. Um, they both use a self-striping yarn with really long runs of color, but you can see what a difference colorway and, and color placement really can make in the same sort of bag. Helene from Sunnyvale, California, used a very bright and sunny colorway, um, and so she's got these, this, these very, very wild color effects. Um, and you can see across the bottom of the bag here the, all the different colors in the yarn. She also made the bag slightly taller just by knitting extra rounds to the body. And she's lengthened the strap so it's more of a shoulder bag than it is a, a small handbag. Then Ava from Clinton Township, Michigan used exactly the same yarn, but she's used a much cooler colorway, so the effect is completely different. And she made the bag as directed, but what she did was try to work with the skein so that the darkest colors are along the bottom here, where they're least visible, and the lightest colors are along the button flap. Then we have Beth from La Crosse, Michigan. And what Beth did, she's made a bunch of different variations here. Um, the first thing that she did was just make the bag slightly larger overall. She's also made the bag much taller, so it's really got more of a, of a true hobo shape to it. Um, and she did that simply by just adding rounds to the bag. She's made much longer straps, so again, it's a more of a shoulder bag. And she's made a wider flap, so the top stays more securely closed. And the most obvious modification that she made is this gorgeous ivy uh, ivy stranded knitting motif. It's just a simple two color small repeat motif but and you can see even after felting that though the stitch definition goes away the the difference in the colors still still really makes the pattern pop and you have a really good idea of what it is. It's got a beautiful soft painterly kind of effect to it. Then we have Kathy from Glendale, California and Kathy made the bag slightly larger overall uh, by casting on 10 more stitches. She made it taller by adding just more plain stockinette rounds before decreasing for the, decreasing for the, um, for the gussets here. And she's added just simple two round stripes, which just add a little bit of character to it. Um, what she's also done is she hasn't felted the bag quite as much as some of the other examples that we see. So the bag still has a lot of stitch definition. You can still see the individual stitches in each of the rows. She's got this great coordinating button. Then there's Sherry from Princeton, BC, and Sherry's made a couple of different modifications. She used a double strand so that there's, the bag is quite, is, the fabric is very sturdy after felting. And she's added a beautiful freehand needle felted embellishment of just a, a, leaf and, a leaf and vine motif. And then finally, Judith from San Francisco, California, made the bag exactly as directed, but just with a single strand of yarn, um, and felted it for an hour in the washing machine, which makes the bag very small. It's got a very thick, firm fabric. And it's just as described in the pattern, except for this really cute little embroider, just simple chain stitch daisy embellishment. So it's perfect for a little girl or even just for a tiny little bag that holds just a couple of necessities. So I hope you've gotten some great ideas about things that you can do with just one skein of really special yarn, or maybe a little bit more if you'd like to make some adjustments or add some of your own creative touches. On our next show, we've got more quick ideas since we're exploring seamless constructions and minimal finishing. I hope to see you then, and remember to make time for yarn every day. Knitting Daily. Make time for yarn every day. The projects and patterns from today's show, plus more ideas and projects, can be found on the web at knittingdailytv.com. This is show 207. Continue Knitting Daily every day by joining the online Knitting Daily community and receive a free newsletter five times a week.
filled with step-by-step -step techniques, inspiring reader-contributed stories, and free patterns. It's about knitting all the time. KnittingDaily.com Knitting Daily has been sponsored in part by Interweave, inspiring, encouraging, and supporting creative self-expression through art and craft media. Interweave.com Yarnmarket.com, a global resource for over 600 yarns plus books, patterns, and other knitting supplies. Yarnmarket.com Fiesta Yarns and Ironstone Yarns. We are color. FiestaYarns.com, IronstoneOnline.com Webs, America's Yarn Store, a source for knitting and crocheting yarns and supplies. Yarn.com Taki Stacy Charles, Feel the Desire, Knit Your Passion. TNNA, the National Needle Arts Association, the organization for independent needle arts retailers. Signature Needle Arts, heirloom tools for your knitting projects. Blue Sky Alpacas, Redefining High Fiber.